Welcome back to Paradise Homes. My name is Chris Fisher, here today with our real estate advisor, our colleague Luigi. Hello. Hola. <laughs> and Luigi, what do we have in store for the viewer today at home? Actually, we have a treat. Today we're going to go tour a two-bedroom lock-off. When I say lock off, this isn't the lock off where, you know, property owners store their stuff in a closet. This is a two bedroom lock off. It's a new concept. A lot of Canadians, Americans, Europeans don't know what this is. So we're going to do a two bedroom lock off. One tour is going to be of a unit that has no furniture, just so you can get the idea of what the distribution is like. And then we have a special guest who's going to show us their two bedroom lock off that they actually live in and show us real numbers. So that's exciting. And right now we're actually in one of the most, well, we're going to tour one of the most uh, spectacular, most popular uh, properties in downtown Playa del Carmen. Popular because of the location. We're how far away? We're close to everything here. Action, supermarket, Fifth Avenue. But what makes this property special is the amenities. We have a co-working, we have a gym, an actual gym, not a sad looking gym with one treadmill. I mean an actual gym. And the most spectacular thing about this building are the four four rooftop pools with ocean view and then you get the sunset view in the evening so it's really spectacular so we're gonna go take a look at that all right let's do it Rock and roll. all right so we just walked into this is building a so there's four buildings a b c d and this building has the co-working space so you know ever since covid co-working spaces or the digital nomad the remote worker that exploded especially in the Mayan Riviera, Tulum. And so having the amenity like a co-working space where people can actually work and be here six months of the year is super important. So we're just gonna walk down here. And um, so let me uh, just turn on some lights. So air, two huge air conditionings. This is a place where you can have a conference, you can work, good high-speed internet, you have a conference uh, setup. There's also the two private rooms, so there's a gentleman in this room right now, um, and then there's TVs, so you can do a presentation, you can record your YouTube videos, whatever it is that you need to do, you can do it all here in this co-working space, which is huge, it's super, super important. So in terms of a, an investment, if you're a, an investor, if you're looking to buy a property and you had a choice between a building that has co-working and a building that does not have the co-working space, then you know, if you do buy the one that has a co-working space, that's another check mark on that list that can probably increase your bookings just because your listing can't offer that as an amenity. So, and it's really nice. It's really, it's really comfortable in here. As a matter of fact, I was here yesterday doing all the numbers with the guest that's going to show us their unit uh, and is renting out their second bedroom as a walk-off. We do all the numbers here, real numbers, so it's a comfortable place to work. Okay, so we're on the rooftop. We haven't shown you the rooftop pools yet because I want to show you the sports bar. So. On the rooftop, you can go into the sports bar. Here you can chill in an air conditioning room, you can order drinks, you can order food, there's music on right now. And you can watch, you can watch UFC, you can watch sports, you can order food, you can order drinks. It's kind of nice and it's air conditioning if you need a break from the hot pool. All right, so now you grabbed your drink, you're in the sports bar, you finish watching some sports, you have your drink in your hand and you get to walk out here. and you get to walk out to this spectacular one, two, three, four, five pools. It looks like five, it's actually four. They kind of combine the way it does the corner. That's all ocean view. It's a little cloudy today, but that's all the ocean. So over here, you would see the Cozumel, you would see the sunrise. So if you want to get up here early, you can see the sunrise. And then in the evening, you would watch the sunset over on that side. And it's actually super cool to be able to see the sun rise and sunset on the same rooftop. All right, cool. So we just got to the gym. So we're just going to walk in. Look at this view. We're on, uh, we're on the top floor. So what I like about this gym is you have a whole functional. So you have TRX whole function, functional kind of space where you can do yoga, you can get a mat, you can do stretching, you can do any kind of exercise really that you want, which is kind of nice. So this is very uncommon, by the way, in a condo to have this kind of space. I mean, this is, I think my gym in, in Canada had a space that was might even be smaller than this and it was a full gym. Um, and then you have all this, free weights, barbells, squat racks, Smith machine, you have all these weights. A lot of cardio machine, 
bench press. So really, if you needed to do a workout and you need to maintain while you're on vacation or staying here for two, three months, this gym has enough to stay, to stay happy and fit. And TVs too. All right, so we just finished looking at the gym, now we're back out on the patio. So what's really cool about this rooftop is that each pool has, its diff has a different temperature. So if you like the pool a little bit warmer, if you like the pool a little bit cooler, so different temperatures. This area here is a little bit more shallow, so that would probably be a good area for kids to, to play together and parents don't really you know, need to worry. They're, it's, not sh it's not deep. Yeah, so after the kids play, if, if you're into swimming and you like to do laps, there's a pool across the way there. I see that long, long pool, that's the lap pool. If you wanna do laps, if you like to swim and get a good, a good uh, you know, cardio workout. And then, out here, I mean, what, what can I say? Just more, more sunbathing area, more pools. And there's the, um, the bar too, the outdoor bar. There's always music. Right now it's a little quiet. It's, it's a little bit slower, slower season. Someone's cooking hamburgers right now. I can smell the, the grill. Could be the restaurant up here, I'm not sure, but there's a games room right around the corner. We're gonna go take a look. And, uh, hello. Hola, hello. salut. Bonjour. Here's another, another pool. I mean, there isn't a shortage of pools. I think there's a couple people playing pool right now. Hola, buenas tardes. So if you want to bring your laptop up here too, you can work, there's a place to sit down. If you wanted to have like a casual meeting or whatever, I mean, you could just whatever you want to do up here. It's, it's, all, it's all for you. So we have pool table. So if you want to come play pool, uh, I think that gets thrown on top as a ping pong table, I'm not sure. Hola. So, I'll just close the door. Yeah, so, I mean, if you get bored, I, I, I can't lie down for too long, I get really bored. So, if you're up here and you're lying by the pool and you get bored, you want to go play a pool, play pool, not be in the pool, but play pool, you can do that. If you want to go to the gym, you can do that. Lots of outdoor showers. And then uh, we're gonna walk over to the bar. <laughs> All right, so on vacation, a lot of people like to drink. Uh, this is probably their favorite part of the rooftop. This is, all, this is all set up to have fun, you know? If you're a property owner, you want your guests to have a good time. You want your guests to have everything. So they got the ocean view. Beautiful ocean view. And then you've got a bar, you can come up here, have a drink, sit down, relax, socialize with your friends, have a swim. So really, this building has it all. Like I said, from the gym, to co-working, to the pools, to the lock-off, two or three bedroom lock-off opportunities, which we already um, uh, kind of talked about. And we're gonna go over the numbers a little later with our, with our uh, guest, uh, Monica. So, what else can I say? We're done, we're, we're done the amenity tour. We're gonna go take a look at uh, one of the uh, lock-offs now. And um, that's it, let's go. All right, so as I mentioned before, we're using the word lock-off. That's the theme of the day. What is a lock-off? We're about to uh, go into this property. It's, it's a two bedroom lock-off. It's two and a half bath. It's the only one on the floor. And there are three bedroom lock-offs as well, but this is a two bedroom. This one is not staged, there's no furniture, so we can get a better idea of the distribution. And I'm gonna explain why people are buying two and three bedroom lock-offs and why it's such a, a good thing. All right, so when you walk into this unit, this is the, the main entrance, the foyer, as we say. This door actually closes and locks off. This can be locked. And this is a separate entrance to the main part of the condo, which is the kitchen, dining room, living room, one bedroom, half bath, and the balcony. So this is the main part of this unit. However, because this locks off, this is a common entrance foyer. And when you walk through here, this is the secondary bedroom. And the secondary bedroom also has its own locked door, which means you can actually rent this second bedroom separately from the main part of the condo. In turn, simultaneously renting, having two renters, 
two rental incomes at the same time. So this is, this is the idea of the two-bedroom concept, the two-bedroom lock-off. There's also three-bedroom lock-offs where two bedrooms are completely separate, have their own separate entrance, and you can actually rent out two bedrooms at the same time as you're renting out the main part of the condo. So this particular two-bedroom lock-off has their closet, their air conditioning, this would be fully furnished, obviously, and then has their ensuite bathroom, which is a full, full bathroom shower. What a lot of property owners are doing though, are they're accommodating or converting their second bedroom into kind of like a little studio kitchenette where they would put perhaps a floating shelf here, a little bar, they would put you know, some plates, some cutlery, some cups, they put a coffee maker, perhaps a little grill, electric grill or microwave, they have the bar fridge. And so this becomes its own self-contained unit where someone could stay here. If someone doesn't want to spend $300 a night to have a full, you know, fully furnished, large condo they can stay in a bedroom that has enough for them to be able to enjoy their vacation with the fridge and they can go shopping most people are out on fifth avenue most of the time anyway so but this is a second bedroom that is being rented for anywhere between 50 dollars to up to 120 130 dollars a night in the high season which is great revenue the idea here is just keep renting this second bedroom as much as you can now there's two scenarios if you're a property owner an investor and you want to stay here six months of the year, you can actually stay in your condo, which is the one bedroom, two and a half, sorry, one bedroom, one and a half bath. There's a living room, dining, kitchen with a balcony. So if you're staying here six months of the year as a property owner, you can live comfortably, enjoy your condo, and not interfere with rental revenue. So you can actually come here for the high season, still be renting out the second bedroom and still have your vacation being paid for or part of, partly being paid for by that second bedroom, which is phenomenal. So the flexibility of a two bedroom lock-off is superior than a regular traditional two bedroom. See, a regular traditional two bedroom, you wouldn't be able to rent out that second bedroom if you were here during the high season or if you're staying in your condo, there's no way to get revenue from that second bedroom if it's not a lock-off. Now you can. So this particular uh, unit is, is a two bedroom, two and a half bath. So if you were to lock this door, the main part is a full bedroom with its ensuite full bathroom. And this is the, the uh, half bath for guests so they don't have to go through your bedroom to use the bathroom. This is the master bedroom, and then the master bedroom has its ensuite. So, as the with a full shower, it's a full bathroom, closet, just a really neat concept. And again, they also have these for three bedrooms, so three bedroom lock house as well. So you have two bedrooms that are separate. Why is this important, and how does this benefit the investor or the property owner? If you were a person looking to go on vacation on any platform, VRBO, Airbnb, and you're on, you're on the platform and you're actually doing a search. Anybody who's doing a search for a two bedroom, your listing will come up because you are a two bedroom, two and a half bath. But at the same time, if someone's looking for a one bedroom, there is a one bedroom, one and a half bath that also comes up. So now you have two listings on that platform. One property, two listings. Then you have a third listing that comes up on the search engine. If someone's looking for just a room for the night or a little, a little studio for the night, your second bedroom comes up as well on that search. So essentially as an investor or property owner, you have three listings in one. And that flexibility, yeah, you can't beat that. So you can increase your, your ROI by having two bedrooms rented simultaneously. Uh, it's really an amazing concept. It's something that started here a few years ago. A lot of North Americans and even Europeans didn't really know the, the lock-off concept. So that's why we wanted to take a little bit of time to explain that to you. Most people say to me lock-off is, is that the closet that the owner locks off their, their stuff when they're on vacation? And I said, no, it's not. A lock-off means it's a completely separate bedroom that's locked off. So I hope that's clear. If you didn't know what a lock-off was before, you do now. And uh, if you have any questions, contact us. In this particular unit, they actually have the laundry. So it's not, there's no laundry machine in here right now. This is not furnished. But see how the laundry machine is on the outside of the both bedrooms, uh, the main be, uh, area and also the second bedroom. So what that means is that the owner, if you're the owner of this property, you can decide if you want to give your guest in the secondary bedroom access to laundry while they're on their stay, or you can change these 
these knobs out, put a lock, and then only keep laundry for yourself as a property owner. It's up to you. Some people like to give that amenity to maybe up the daily rate or, or to get a better booking or get more bookings because they offer an additional service, which is laundry. So some people do, some people don't. It's up to you, but it is here just in case. All right. So we just took the tour of the two-bedroom lock-up upstairs that had no furniture or anything in it. And we talked a little bit about the concept and how you can uh, increase your ROI and, and income and so on and so on. But what we want to do right now is we actually want to take you into a two bedroom lock off from a colleague of ours, a friend of ours who actually lives here and is renting actively her second bedroom and talk real numbers. And she can, ex she can explain and basically uh, describe her experience hands on. So you guys are getting real numbers from a real person in a real, two bedroom lock off that is active right now. So we're gonna go in, we're gonna introduce you to, we have a special guest. So, hello. Hello, welcome home. <laughs> come on, come on. <laughs> All right, so this is the, um, the exact same layout. This is Monica, by the way. Hi. So Monica lives here, you live here. I live here, this is my home. Yeah, so it's two, two beds, three baths. Two and a half baths. Yeah. Three and a half baths. So you live in this side. I live on this side and I live on the ground floor. So what I love about my unit is I have this beautiful okay, come take a look. outside here. Beautiful patio, super spacious, yeah. nice furnished. Beautiful. I love it. So how long have you been living here? Lived here about a year now. Okay, one year. One year, yeah. Perfect. I'm not moving out. So you have a dog. Where is he? I do have a dog. He's not here right now. He went outside. Okay, he we're gonna outside. close. We're gonna close the doors just so that for the aircon. Okay, so walk me through this. Yeah. You live here. You've been here a year. I live here. I've okay. been here a year. You, I, this is your bedroom. This is my bedroom here. And Come then you on. have you have your 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 ensuite bathroom. My own ensuite bathroom. This is my own king size bed. Right. So we saw this in the other video. Okay. Now you guys get an idea of what it looks like when it's furnished. Someone living here, real people, real person. Mm -hmm. And then show us your little jewel over here. This is how you make your money, right? This is how I make my money. Okay. This so. is how I afford to live here for free. So, I'm going to close the door here. So this is my Airbnb, where I've hosted many, many guests. I've had almost 150 guests so far. This is their own little bathroom. I am a super host, so I do a very good job at making sure that the guests feel comfortable. This is a hospitality industry, so you have to make sure that you do a really good job on you know, providing the amount of towels that they need. I always have extra you know, sunscreen, aloe vera, that's not closed. <laughs> always shampoo, conditioner. And what's really cute about this as well is that when you care about your guests, they really care as well. So every single time I come in here and I, I sometimes do my own cleanings, They'll leave things like those, there's always like little surprises. Somebody just gave me a, a tiny bottle of wine. You know, I had. Did you get coffee? Books. You got coffee. I got coffee. Someone left so coffee. So I'm always getting gifts, right? But I leave gifts out for guests, and I think that it really shows a level, like a touch of you know appreciation that I bring to the guests. I always leave snacks and two water bottles as well. So. You know, cool. make sure the guests stay hydrated. But yeah, this is essentially it. It's a super small room, but it does so well because it's, I have a lot of one night stays, a lot of two night stays. I don't really get a one week booking in, in, except for in high season sometimes, um, but it does so well. It's just like a tiny little hotel room, right? Where That's so cool. sleep and enjoy and then enjoy all the amenities that if I'm asked often. Do, do, do you offer, do you let your guests have access to your laundry room? I do. Okay, so they could do laundry if they, they need to. They could do laundry. I always provide like two towel, or two sets of towels. So two for the bath, two for um, the beach and the pool area. Cool. You know, tons of hangers. Cool. Well, you do a good job. Thank you. So you live here. Okay, so you're paying rent. So this is I a different rent. situation. We yes. talked about upstairs. If you were a property owner, mm -hmm what would be the benefit as a property owner because you can live on one side rent out the other side if you're a property owner that isn't here all yeah. year round you can have both of these areas rented or the exactly. whole condo so rented you could essentially have three listings you have one as as the two bedroom you have one just for this unit here the one bedroom with the kitchen and, and the living room and then another just the, the one suite but you're renting here and so I you're living here. on this side running the second bedroom as an airbnb exactly. and that's paying 
Do you know approximately how much is that paying? That's paying roughly 70% of my annual Annual rent. expenses, rent. Yeah. So you're living here almost for free. Almost for free, essentially. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. Okay, so here, I just want to, the, the, the idea here is, you know, a lot of the times you'll hear, you know, realtors or brokers or advisors saying, hey, you can make up to this much, you can make this much. And they throw a bunch of numbers and they usually use the word, well, an average or an almost average, or you estimate. could estimate We did it. the numbers. We actually went. We sat down, we did the numbers. Which you guys, we took a tour of the property, so you saw all the amenities. We went to the mm -hmm. co-working area yesterday, and we went through every single calendar on Airbnb. All my bookings. All your bookings, one by one, one by one. Rates. What your rate was at the time, and yeah. we actually broke down the numbers, and we did percentages of occupancy, your your daily rate. Yeah. We did the numbers for the year, some of your expenses, and so we want to share that with you, so you can see. A real person with real numbers, mm -hmm. nothing estimated. These are actually her numbers. Keep in mind, though, because you're living here, you're doing everything yourself because you are. I am doing everything myself. So that room to clean, it takes me roughly 45 minutes. Right. Um, so I just do it myself most of the time. If I do have a cleaner, my cleaners will cost me around 100 pesos to 200 pesos, depending on who my cleaner is. Right. Um, and then you also have to account for electricity and you have to account for um, Electricity and well, if you had a property manager, and a property so manager. you're doing it yourself. So if okay. you had a property manager, so everybody knows, typically it's about 25 percent of the rental income mm -hmm. is what a property manager is going to take. She's not paying that 25 percent because you're you yeah. are a property manager. You, yeah. That's what you that's do. That's what I do. That's my. That's my. You that's manage my how many properties? Right now, I'm managing 16 properties. 16. 16. Well done. Yeah. So if you, when we do these numbers, keep in mind that if you were not living here and you're not Monica and you were to do these kind of numbers, you would mm -hmm. also have to take the additive expense of having a property manager on site do this for you. But if you are a property owner that lives on one end and wants to rent out the second bedroom and do exactly. what she does on your own, you can also do that since it's not that much of a headache. It's not that much of a job. And honestly, if, it, if you think about it, I'm single, but if you're living with, you know, it's your significant other, it's both of you, it's, you're paying almost nothing, right? Because now you're splitting that cost in half if you're yeah. renting or if you own. Yeah. Um, and well, then if it, you own, you don't have the rental you costs. You have absolutely nothing, right? right? So, so it's actually... It's great. And it's just laundry, right? Just so laundry. I do my own laundry and that's, yeah. that's it. Can you, if, if, they're interested and wanted to contact you. Would you be able to obviously charge a fee, but mm -hmm. show people how to properly set up their lock off to maximize their profits? Absolutely. Would you do that? Absolutely. Cool. So there's no reason to contact Monica. <laughs> Do you want to sit down? Let's, let's sit. sit down. Let's okay. do the numbers. There is another thing to consider as well. Um, when you're on Airbnb, there is a lot of taxes. So if you don't have residency um, in Mexico, you don't have a R RFC, RFC, your tax number. Your tax number. Uh, Airbnb does take a big chunk of that as well. Okay. So, so the idea so here would be to get someone to get their RFC number. If you don't have an RFC number, it's in your best interest to get a property manager. And if you have residency here, you have your tax number here, you could do what I'm doing. And right, do and pay a lot less tax. Exactly. We can help you do all that, by the way. So we have the legal teams, immigration teams, mm -hmm. lawyers. We have everybody to help you set up. So if you are looking to invest in Mexico, looking to invest here in Mamayan Riviera, and you want to run in an Airbnb, part of me, or VRBO, any type of vacation rental, short-term rental, and you want to get set up with your tax number, your residency, we can handle all that. And we have Monica who's offered to even help you get it all set up in terms of how to set up your, mm -hmm. your lock off to really profit and not make all the mistakes that most people would make at the yeah. beginning, which I'm sure you learned. So we, like I said, we, we don't want to do anything estimated. We actually wrote down all we the, numbers the numbers here. So if we're looking down at the, at the sheet once in a while, it's just because we can't memorize all these numbers. We've got all kinds of percentages. We've got the daily mm -hmm. rates, nightly rate, average rate, the, your, your monthly income, yeah. and then some expenses. So you, t you started living here in October. You didn't start doing any- Any rentals until, until November. November. So, so like mid-November, late November. So November 2022 here was your first month and you have a 26% 26% off. occupancy because it was, it was later in the month. Yeah. Right, and you're doing $50 a night. It was roughly, yeah. So that, that month you did $400. Okay, so mm -hmm. December, now December- These are all US prices by the way. Yeah, US dollars, yeah, good point. 
So you, you, in December, you split the month up. So tell me about that. So December 1st to December what? Yeah, so we essentially have like high season and then mega high season, which is Which Christmas. we call peak season, Peak really. season. Um, Christmas and New Year's. Christmas and New Year's, exactly. So, so De December 1st to what day do you charge? Around $70. So it was around $70. Um, yeah. The first to the what day of the month? The first to around the 18th, 20th. Okay, so December... First to the 18th, approximately $70 a month. And then we go into that. Per night, yeah. Per night, pardon me, per night. Yeah. And, and then, then we go into that peak season. So exactly. Christmas and New Year's. If you guys have never been here for Christmas and New Year's in Playa del Carmen, it's the same. <laughs> the Fifth <laughs> Avenue is so busy. Like there's really, so I love it here. It's, it's a lot of fun. So mm -hmm. all of the rates go through the roof. So, so you go from $70 a night to $120. Dollars and up to, I would say up to $120. Yeah. Okay. I, I don't have, like, I do a lot of um, uh, price labs and, and price automation. So it really depends. Like, if I have, if I don't have a booking for one date in specific, it could be 120 but it could also be, you know, 87 It could okay. be 90 um, But I would but it say could my, go up to 120 Up to 120 I would say my, the average is around there. And so you, you had 87% occupancy in December, and that was only your second month doing this yep. so you made you you, you made twenty four hundred and forty dollars that month mm -hmm. that's gross by the way okay so there are some gross. expenses we're going to go through that yeah and then we roll into now 2023 so in january you did 97 percent occupancy yeah and now you're rolling at 80 dollars 75 to 80 dollars a night so mm -hmm. in january you did 2250 these, yeah. these are good numbers they're not bad <laughs> not bad <laughs> Very modest. I mean, they're paying your like your your your. They're paying your rent. They're yeah. paying 70, 75 percent of your rent here. Mm -hmm. So uh, February ninety six percent. March, what happened in March? It was my birthday. <laughs> she doesn't want to work on her birthday. <laughs> no, but you booked. No, I did. Yeah. I, I blocked off my calendar. So I had I, one of my best friends came down to stay with me. So so she stayed. In so the, she just she stayed in the room. I had that blocked off. So I think it was a about a week and a half that was blocked off in my car. Okay, so that's why I dropped from 96, you did 68% occupancy in March. Okay, yeah. so you still did 1575 that month. And then April, 96 occupancy. Yeah. And then now when we get into May, so let's talk about the seasons real quick. So the high season here is typically, we start a high season mm -hmm. uh, middle of December. And then about a week after that, we go into a peak season, which is Christmas and New Year's. And then usually around this January 8th till yeah. the end of April, is still high season. So we have high, peak, and then high until and then May 1st. May 1st, we go into what we call value season. You could call it low season. And so from April, you did 96%, but in May, you still did 90% occupancy. Well, it's really interesting because you say low, lower season or value season, but what really ends up happening here in Playa is there's, we're seeing more and more that there's not really a low season. Um, and it's interesting because the higher season, obviously you have everybody coming from the US, you have everybody, everybody yeah. coming from Canada. Now everybody that's booking, they're all from Mexico City. They're all coming from you know, the big cities, Guadalajara, Guadalajara, Monterrey. Get, yeah. Everybody's coming from the bigger cities. They're all Mexican that are coming down. So, yeah. so we, we still have a high occupancy. It's just a di different demographic. Different demographics. So we have the Latin Americans that are, their kids are off of school, mm -hmm. so they want to travel. Maybe some Europeans that are traveling. So exactly. so May you went to ninety percent occupancy. That 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 brought you to. Um, 1350 because now you just dropped the rate so in May you dropped the rate to about $50 a night yeah and then June 56 and then July 77% so I guess July that's when so the kids get out of school in June so in July August that's when you saw a bump so you did 77% occupancy in July which is 1200 again $50 a night yeah. and then August so we're in so August we're right in August now right now and you're at 58% I'm at 58% occupancy and it's the oh, what's the date today 15th it's the 15th so yeah. I'll probably end up having around 70 77% occupancy wow and then September you're already 33% booked I'm already 33% booked that's just incredible so if we take all of her numbers and we add them all up so if you do complete September mm -hmm. only with 33% occupancy we didn't even add any more dates to that if you yeah. just stay at 33% occupancy in September mm -hmm. and we add all this revenue up, we are, we're only considering 11 months here because October you were not, you were not in this unit. Mm -hmm. So there is no October. I didn't even look at your October booking, so we didn't even add that. I so this is yet. 11 months. So when we add this all up, you had a gross revenue of $17,930. Mm -hmm. Now from there, you have some taxes and, and so on that you have to pay. Okay. Uh, so it was, you know, from your, 
17,930 gross after your taxes and expenses. Your expenses, you usually clean yourself, but if you don't want to clean, you're saying you're paying about $10 I'm, for cleaning. I'm paying a, around $10 for cleaning, depending on the cleaner. And you're doing um, about how many checkouts? I would say roughly just because it's a, such a small unit and there isn't a lot of long-term stays, I'm doing a higher turnover, so about 15... 15 checkouts. So 15 checkouts. At 10, so it's $150 a month. So we put $150 a month, mm -hmm. it's $1,800 a year. Yeah. Electricity, you're about, that room is, is you're calculating about 900 pesos a month, um, mm -hmm. which is $60. So let's say $720 a year for electricity. Yeah. And then your taxes you know, was 15%. So you're paying about $3,100. So total, right. your expenses are 5620 approximately. So that brings you from $17,930 gross, mm -hmm. minus your expenses, you're still netting almost $15,000 a year. So oh you're, yeah. you live in one of the most popular, most sought out buildings in Playa del Carmen. It really is. With I mean, the amazing amenities. Amenities, are, amenities are, are amazing. I mean, we saw the location we went for a tour. is incredible. I mean, yeah, five minutes from the beach, um, you know, best bars and restaurants around. Right. So now if we're talking in terms of a property owner, an investor who mm -hmm. wanted to spend the entire year in the main part of the unit, mm -hmm. they could be looking at anywhere between 15, depending, maybe even more, 15,000, mm -hmm. maybe more, depending on how they, they or even less depending on how they manage it, but that's a pretty good income. So that could probably take care of some groceries because if you're the man, if you're the property owner, you've paid cash. There yep. isn't, you're not paying a mortgage here. You're not, you're not exactly. paying a, a rent. So really that's money that's paying for your groceries, your electricity. You're, you, you could live here absolutely for free, even as a property owner. So, well, you did a pretty good job. Thank you. Amazing. <laughs> so if you have any questions for Monica, regarding property management, that's what you yeah, do. Absolutely. Monica is also a, a real estate advisor, works with a with real estate company here, uh, works with us actually. Uh, and if, if you have any questions for her, if you have any questions regarding any properties that might be for sale in this building or any lock-offs in Playa del Carmen, Tulum, all across the Mine Riviera, you can definitely uh, check us out. You can give us, uh, uh, well, send us an email mm -hmm. and contact us and we'll be more than happy to answer some of your questions and, and show you some properties and, and talk further in property management if you'd like as well. Monica, I really appreciate it. Thank you for taking the time. Yeah, thank you. Letting us in your home and, and showing us how you're doing it uh, with that second bedroom. Uh, congratulations, by the way. Thank I mean, you. I'm passionate nice. about it, you know, like I, I fell into it and, and I absolutely love it. I love hospitality. I love I love helping. That's, you know, that's why it's, this is my business. And it's yeah. awesome. Well, you're doing yeah. a good job. So I'm thank sure you, you can help a lot of people. Um, but again, thank you so much. Keep killing it. Keep, <laughs> in, keep just hustling. It's amazing. This is an inspiration. So it's doable. It's, it's real. Yeah. Um, and you know, we're here to answer all those questions. So this is what we do. We, we continue making content because we want to help anybody that's looking to come to Playa del Carmen, Mine Riviera, anybody looking to invest. This is, this is what we do. We do these content, this content for you. We love you guys. This is why we're here. So if you have any questions, if you want to contact us, please reach out to that email and then we'll get on a phone call, a video call. We'll, 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 we'll reach out to you guys as soon as we can and uh, we'll, we'll get your answers to all your questions. All right. Have a great day. Thank you so much. Thank you. Ciao. <laughs>